Thank you. Uh, I would need the. <laughs> uh, hello to everybody. Yes, that's the first uh, photos. Um, I am Martina Caironi, they int introduced me. I am a Paralympic athlete, but before that, I was able body uh, like you. So I had my legs. I know the experience to be an able body. So um, about at the age, no, stop. About at the age of 18, I lost my left leg in a um, moto accident. It happens to many, many people, many young people, and it happened also to me. At that moment, I, of course, I was uh, not so happy. And, but after that moment, I became um, an amputee. So that's me, and that's me. Uh, that's me without prosthesis. Uh, and what can I do without the prosthesis is walking with crunches or um, driving, for example. I don't need the leg. But for most of the activities of my daily life, of course, I need a, uh, a prosthesis. And after um, a few months, I, um, I wear the first, uh, I can call it leg, because it's a prosthesis, but for me, uh, it, become, it became a leg. Uh, in fact, I, I do all my activities with my prosthesis. Also, going shopping is not something, for me, is something now that it's normal, but it's not so easy to go shopping with crunches. Have you ever think about this? Um, in part in uh, how can I say, this leg, this prosthesis is uh, the new model, is the new one, and with this one I can do pretty everything. There are many prostheses. Mm, the last one calls uh, Genium X3, and with this one I can go into the water, I can mm, go upstairs, downstairs, uh, I can walk around without any pain, and the m important thing is also the, the socket, okay? Uh, that's, the okay, <laughs> that's some, uh, how to say it in English, I don't know. <laughs> uh, some trophy, of course. Um, anyway, uh, so what, what I was saying to you is that after my accident, I came back to my previous life, to my life, and I decided to go to do everything. Um, I'm from Italy, uh, and that's my shoe, the only shoe that I use for running, because I just need the, the, the right one, uh, while in the left leg, I use another leg, another prosthesis. Thanks also to Otto, Otto Bock. I um, I can choose my leg. Uh, I can choose uh, the activity that I want to do and change my leg. So um, also in Italy, they um, uh, they publish many articles about uh, the Paralympic Games. Um, maybe I, I haven't tell you that I participate to two Paralympic Games. Okay, um, the first one was in London, 2012 and the motto was uh, inspire a generation and for the Paralympic Games it was really uh, can you please stop the no I don't <laughs> okay you see <laughs> oh, I don't want to spoil it okay it's not me uh, <laughs> um, no because I wanted to talk about the Paralympic Games you know <laughs> In 2012, I participated to my, at the my first Paralympic Games in London, and the motto was saying that it was um, inspire a generation, and that was the point. Uh, with the Paralympic Games, uh, the culture of all the world became really to change about the perception of the uh, disability and of a Paralympic athlete. In fact, mm, London gave us a, a great example how to treat the Paralympic athletes, uh, and that's uh, in the equal way of the Olympic athletes. For me, it was a success because I won the gold medal in the 100 meters uh, with a prosthesis that wasn't 
so um, new uh, compared to the to the daily prosthesis that uh, that I that I wear, but uh, and my, my running wasn't so good in my opinion, but I won. Okay, after that my my life changed for the second time. I uh, I didn't change so, <laughs> uh, and uh, I began famous in Italy. I began to to go around the world to to share my story and to. Um, to bring everywhere my my experience, like like today. Okay, now I have to <laughs> to say something about these photos. That's me in uh, in Bologna, um, riding a bicycle because with this leg I can ride a bicycle. I can do like this. I can move. Okay, and this is me uh, in the gym. I I also have to go to the gym, not just to the track. Uh, I use this leg for training, uh, many kind of uh, exercises. You can see that I can use it like a properly leg. So uh, it's very important also for a user to, to feel very comfortable with the leg, with the prosthesis, because it's something that you can use in different situations. And sometimes I also put it off. Uh, also, in this occasion, I, I do aerial silks without the prosthesis. And that was me uh, in uh, Rio de Janeiro talking to the some local people uh, before the Paralympic Games. Uh, what I noticed is that uh, before uh, an Olympic and a Paralympic Games, they invite many athletes to the place in uh, which the Olympic and Paralympic Games will take place. For example, I also went to Tokyo um, in July, and for the first time I experienced um, how is uh, the uh, Japanese culture, and, and that's amazing. And especially I, I'm curious about uh, Tokyo 2020, because uh, as also uh, Hiromi said, Hiromi, uh, the um, the technologies that will be in Tokyo 2020, they would be very innovative. And so each Paralympic Games are different in London, in Rio, and in, and in Tokyo. And I can't wait to see it. Uh, OK, that's me uh, with the silver medal in the long jump. Um, that's me running uh, at the Paralympic Games in uh, Rio. As you see, we run with a different leg, different prosthesis. It calls blade. I have a free knee. I call it free because uh, um, if I put my weight on the knee, on that knee, I fall down. So for using that, I I need some training. As we see, the um, the training camp that Otto Bock do is for um, allow people to learn how to use this kind of prosthesis. This is me with a nice uh, <laughs> expression, uh, jumping. Uh, you see, I jump on my leg. I, I jump on the prosthesis, and then I, I fly. That's me uh, also in Rio. This is London 20, uh, mm, 2017 at the World Championship. This is with the Otto Bock uh, um, girl. <laughs> uh, OK, I, I just show you some medals. I mean, uh, some experience that I did thanks to the Paralympic Games, thanks to the sport, thanks to the Otto Bock, of course. And now I want to show you this video that represents all my activities. Um, this is me while I'm skating and riding. It's something that maybe an amputee doesn't imagine that it's possible to do, but with a properly leg, properly prosthesis, you can do everything. And I also practice uh, snowboard with a different prosthesis. Um, that's a hobby, but I would also like to um, compete one day.
<laughs> if the Federation will allow me to do it, because you know, it's very dangerous. <laughs> Um, I always been uh, uh, a sportswoman, so after my accident I couldn't stop to, to do any kind of sport. And one time I am here to tell you that technologies are important to, to give back a dream to uh, people who, who lost a leg or who had uh, an accident or who have a disability since the the board. Okay, this is a training moment of the long jump. As you see, I jump on the leg and I fall on the sand that hopefully is soft. And here is a, in a beautiful uh, training track uh, in Italy. <laughs> Actually, it's not beautiful. Now they, they did a new one, fortunately. It's also important to have uh, a great place to training. And finally, that's my second Paralympic Games. That's the um, final of 100 meters, which I also quite lose my leg because I, I got, I became thinner. And like now, the prosthesis sometimes get um, bigger. But anyway, I arrived first and that was a really, a really amazing moment because um, I was suffering for that. I was I was preparing for four years before uh, my sec for my second Paralympic Games, and after this competition, I I fell down crying for uh, I don't know 20 minutes, and that's the power of the sport. The power of the sport is to make you make people um, feel emotions make people cry and laugh and especially for us for uh, the Paralympic athletes it's uh, something that that I, I can't explain because if you don't participate to a Paralympic Games you would never know the emotion to be there to feel a part of such a great experience and going through the Paralympic Village and to the track, to the interview, to the crowd. Can you imagine to enter into a stadium full of people? So that's also very important, the people, the, the crowd that go to the stadium, that participate to the event. Uh, without the crowd, it's not the same, because when you run and there is, a, uh, how to say, there is a, some um, ru rumor, <laughs> you, you really feel more motivated. Anyway, um, if you have some question, because I, I would, I can talk forever about my experience. I don't want to, <laughs> to talk forever, but thank you for <laughs> listening to me. I quite impro improvise. I, I didn't prepare anything. So You're good. Don't worry. <laughs> You're good. Uh, no, that was impressive. Uh, I mean, now you realize what she's doing, which is amazing, and the ability to adapt. Because on what I understand, every, I don't know how many, and maybe you can express the process, you have new prothesis and new technologies helping you. How do you work with, in that case, Autobot? How do you challenge them to make you better? Uh, well, fortunately, I am ambassador of Autobot since 2000 and uh, 14, and I can wear different kind of prosthesis. I I try to go to the limit, you know, for everything. Uh, I live in Bologna, where there is the um, like the place of Autobox. So every month I go there and I say, okay, I want to do this. Okay, I uh, sorry, there is the sand into my leg, into my knee, and that's a problem <laughs> because when I go to the sea, for example, I come back to the technician. I say. Uh, there is uh, uh, some rocks inside. Uh, anyway, Autobock for me is a um, safe place because I can explore the world. I can I can do everything. So I, I have to really thanks to to, to Autobock. So with them you can design for your future. You know. Sorry. With them you can design your future. 
Of course, uh, it's, um, it's a double side work, of course, because they produce, I use, and without them I can use it, but they <laughs> can produce without me and without all the users. And so when it comes to s snowboarding, mm. how do you do that? I mean, is that some a very different leg that you created? It's a pro car, it's the name of the leg, and it's not uh, a knee, but it's uh, a system of um, uh, English. It's like how do you call it? Suspension. <laughs> yes, and you stay like this, and you just go, go, and don't think about anything. <laughs> and it it comes uh, many years ago. I I went with my friends, and as able as able body person, you know, I I just have to check something before I have to change my leg. Uh, um, and also change my, my boots, so that's quite normal for me now. It's, um, it's just something that you have to um, get used to. Just, you change your shoes, yeah. shoes. I change my leg. <laughs> that's all. As simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to set a challenge, but not a challenge, but a practice with you, with Pierre Vautier, we had yesterday. The practice? With Pierre Vautier, the snowboarder we had yesterday. Ah, yes, unfortunately, I, was here, uh, I wasn't here to meet him, but... Next time? Next time. Uh, we will organize that, so you can snowboard with him. Maybe, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Congratulations. And when it comes to... So we've seen the athlete is challenging you, and you help mass of people. How do you manage to bring the best of the technologies that you do for the athletes to bring it to the people, and what is the cost issue for people to have prosthesis? Well, <laughs> so a very good, it's a very good question, and very complicated to answer in just one or two or three sentences. <laughs> Actually, as you understood from Martina, we have to listen, and we listen our our, our customers in order to make sure that we join the expectation and. As you understood, uh, unfortunately, right now, we have not one prosthesis which can replace all our different activities. So when we're looking about um, the ProCar prosthesis, for instance, it's uh, innovation also. It was by listening people, I lost my leg and I need and I would like to do ProCar as well. And this ProCar was invented in Grenoble, nearby the mountains, by accident. It's not an accident, it's just because we are listening our 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 customers, our the people with need our innovation and to coming to your question with the balance from the economical point of view, yeah <coughs> it is something which is actually yeah, tri uh, tri difficile with French. Um, it's actually uh, very difficult uh, in, uh, to make individual solution worldwide on the quality what <coughs> we need because we have to ensure also our compliance and uh, all these different uh, issues regarding medical devices. And as an industry, uh, it is a big challenge and we challenge this every day. And we expect from the different countries that governments uh, has law for people <laughs> like you in order that that uh, prosthetic is uh, reimbursed, uh, take over. So it is much more difficult in Italy compared to uh, compared to France. Or the best place in the world is Germany. It is maybe the reason why Otto Bock could started his business model in Germany and in the States, of course. In France, you see, we are not so small as a company and. Uh, all together, yeah, we have to take care. We have not big quantities. When we talk about the pro -carb, it's only 10, 20 knee joints per year in every country. Fortunately, we are a worldwide provider and can balance some uh, yeah, economic issues. Yeah. So I guess what you've, what you've done together is a clear example that innovation improves people's life. Yes, of course, and also the the price is very important. The, the price question is very important because each country has a different policy about the um, the prosthesis, about the uh, sanitary system, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, if you have a properly leg, 
a properly sorry prosthesis, you can enter better in the society. You can do everything, as I said. Uh, I mean, mm, you can go walking to the work. You can you can stay you can stay standing uh, without any problems, and you can feel good. So you are not a weight for the society, but you are um, an improvement. You know. You're included. Just as anyone. Yes, you are just like anyone. Yeah. But maybe also you can give it something more because you you s you know that there would be some difficulties uh, for doing the normal things, but you can do it with the prosthesis or <coughs> or with a wheelchair or with a system uh, or as a skeleton as a skeleton. Or uh, I mm, I really appreciated the example of the supporter for. Uh, for doing, for how to say, for um, lifting. lifting, because uh, it can in the future there would be maybe some application for people who has problem o um, on the of the back, mm -hmm. for example. There are many applications. Can I say something more? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I'm also ambassador of a European uh, space agency uh, for a project that calls Grand Challenge, and. Oh. The idea is to uh, create uh, some systems um, for the um, space that would be uh, useful for people with disabilities. So I, I'm the first ambassador that are not an uh, uh, astronaut, <laughs> maybe one day. Um, and I think that is very important because the, the research of new technologies like Ottobock do, like uh, the space agency, maybe like uh, someone of you do. It's very important because there are so many things to do in the future for, impro for improve and improve the daily life of, the pe of people with disabilities. Thank and you. why space? Because they have, uh, I think, uh, enough uh, money for research and, uh, and because they, they study something useful for uh, support the body, for example, or because they have uh, some specific materials that mm, is not so common to, to find. So that's that's um, cutting, cutting edge technology and research. Yes. Wow, congratulations. It's such a great project. I hope that mm, it will be successful. Well, and what is your expectation on it? Expectation of expectation of on the results they could get, the changes they could yes to change uh, the mentalities, the culture and the practice, the uh, the technologies to improve the technologies. I'm not into the research. I'm just uh, an ambassador, so I'm I'm I just want to to say to you that there is this project because they are working. They are working. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Questions from the audience for Martina. Maybe they want a coffee. So I, I guess they do, but we'll go for one question. Yes. Uh, a question of technology with Autobock and competitors of Autobock. Um, when you race, um, how does the supply uh, is linked to your speed? So uh, if you change with another blade, could you gain uh, 1% or 2% of speed because of the technology of the other blade. Uh, okay. What is... Uh, the there the is an international, um, re uh, international law uh, that allows everybody to wear a kind of prosthesis. You, can, you can't project a new one and use it for running faster. But uh, during these years, I changed many prosthesis, many blades, many technologies for running, and I improve my, my running. When I, st when I um, run in London, my time in uh, 100 meters was 15.89. <coughs> now, my personal best and, my, and the world record of my categories is 14.61. So it's more than one second less. And that's because I changed the prosthesis. I training more, of course. And if you see, uh, if you go to YouTube, <laughs> for example, and, and write 100 meters T42, that's my category. Now they change and my category is T32. 
63. You can see the difference between my running in uh, London 2012, like this, and my running in Rio that you see, and especially when I set the world record the, day b the, the years before in Doha 2015, my running was really like this. So uh, also for, uh, for my back, <laughs> that was a great improvement because my, my running now is really um, easy. I, I don't feel pain, I don't, yes, I, I feel uh, the effort, of course, but not as before, so I can push more. Sorry, I talk a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. And yeah, sure. Sorry, sorry. Just can a uh, point of view of um, manufacturer. Um, manufacturer, as Otto Bock, is one thing. He is manufacturer of components, but uh, Manuela has a CPO. Uh, orthoprothesist um, prosthesist who is fitting her prosthetic individually and we are not comparable with Formula One uh, when the best car has the best performance. It is definitely, as she is saying, at first the person and the availability about different solutions, the choice is uh, and the market and nobody can really uh, said this is much more better as another. The engagement what Otto Bock is doing by the services what we are talked about uh, during the Paralympics for instance that when something happened with the prothesis unfortunately is artificial and can have and need uh, a support then is where we are very strong. Uh, and um, this is an investment that we do since uh, 1988. Yeah. So Compared what all the discussion is, is as with Formel 1, as is uh, McLaren better as uh, um, uh, uh, McLaren better as Mercedes. Italy <laughs> in car. Um, uh, this I can't uh, not confirm because it was a question. Yeah. yeah, and technological doping is a correct point. What rules do you put in place? to maintain standards that can apply to everyone and not to the very few that have the luck to get access to the best technologies. Uh, I don't have the answer, so, so we go to the coffee break. And I thank you so much for coming from Italy, thank just you. for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you, Mario.